good morning and i'd like to thank dr nangya for including me in this uh, session so these are my financial disclosures and without uh, further ado i'll just go directly to the components of a printout you have heard about various forms of imaging today and i'll talk to you about the oct all of us are familiar with the older version of the oct and the fact that it had certain uh, sort of uh, parameters that we needed to look at when we analyzed it the newer forms also the very similar and whenever you walk through an oct printout the things that you need to look at are the quality is the score good enough the second thing that i would look at is this rnfl map because it would tell you which of the areas are thick and which are thin you get a feel for what it looks like the third thing that i would look at is the deviation map and that is this over here and that will tell you as to our particular areas of the rnfl thinner or thicker than what you would expect as compared to a statistically normal database if all three are normal then you're probably okay you just need to take a quick look at the thisnet map which basically is this map here and if your values fall in the green zone then things are all right if they are in the yellow or the red zone you need to look a little bit more carefully these are basically average values of each of the sectors and they are again classified as green yellow or red depending on how they differ from the normative database these will come to a little later and these are basically summary parameters of various thickness values on the oct if you look at the rtv oct very similar same color pattern except that your abnormalities are marked in the ring out there the average parameters look like this and the tisnet map looks like that but before you start interpreting a scan like this you need to look at some other things the first thing like i told you is the scan quality and the signal strength of the scan does affect how the rnfl thickness varies if you look at this uh, uh, slide which i have taken from this paper here with a very low signal strength of 5 your rnfl thickness is 97 microns for the same eye once your signal strength is 10 your rnfl thickness is 118 microns that's an almost uh, 30 micron difference so if you don't have a good scan quality you are not actually getting accurate accurate values and this is uh, somebody whom we scanned first time signal strength of 4 you're seeing two quadrants marked abnormal you're seeing a fair amount of red on the summary printout once you rescan him with a better signal strength that looks completely normal and you have just one or two values which are borderline so it's very important that you assess the scan quality before you decide to interpret an oct you also get artifacts which look like this and when you look at this map that looks like a weird black line which is going all over the place now this can be because of post signal strength it can be because of a blink it can be because of high myopia or it can be because of sectoral retinal damage like an uh, a scar or something of that sort so if you see that black line hitting zero anywhere you need to take a closer look at that scan because the rnfl uh, thickness never drops to zero because you have supportive tissue even if your rnfl loss is zero you still have supportive tissue which takes up some space <coughs> let me walk you through the scan now here you have a poor signal strength of 4 and you're seeing these little black spots on the scan now these black spots basically are areas where the oct has got no data whatsoever and why does this happen it sometimes happens after you have done apneation and gonioscopy and send that patient for an oct you have dry spots on the cornea you don't get any scans there so if you see something with black spots like that throw it out of the window you can also get this sometimes if you have a vitreous floater which is blocking the image so in those patients even repeating the image is not really going to be helpful then just take a look at this your scan is probably not well centered or the patient has been sitting obliquely so this is sort of scan with multiple abnormalities on it which you don't really need to use for interpretation you need to repeat the scan and see whether you can get something better we look at centration now and the rnf thickness that you're seeing is basically around this ring if you look at this image here you can see that the ring is shifted upwards and this is something which is nice and centered look at the values here this is on the top corner ct and what you're seeing over there is multiple abnormal zones you center it everything is normal so you would have been busy treating red disease on somebody with a poorly done scan if you hadn't paid attention to the centration i'll walk you through one more this is with the cirrus ct and here you have this scan obviously not well centered this is decentered downwards that is decentered upwards this is when you do it after centration and 
Now you can compare both face to face. And what you are seeing over here is this abnormal zone has become normal. This abnormal zone, this normal zone over here has become abnormal. And it has changed the way you would classify disease. And this is important for you when you are doing longitudinal follow up, also when you are looking for hints of damage. So if you do not look at the centration, you can actually misinterpret the uh, OCT image. Again, apples and oranges, you cannot compare. You cannot compare a, norm, a stratos OCT versus an ST OCT. They use different technologies. You cannot compare a top one OCT versus a stratos OCT because they use different technologies slightly and they use different normative databases more importantly. So an abnormality on one need not always translate into an abnormality on the other. A particular value on one is not comparable with a particular value on the other. This is uh, basically to illustrate that even on the RT view, you have similar codings for disease ties. Uh, beyond the RNFL, we also look at the macula sometimes, and this is uh, basically the glaucoma, the ganglion cell complex, where this thickness, hmm, which includes the nerve fiber layer and the ganglion cell, this area is again considered to be important for glaucoma. There are reports that it may detect early glaucoma earlier than conventional nerve fiber layer limits, though there are a lot of people who don't agree with this. However, this is somebody whom we, who was a glaucoma suspect and here you can see a fair amount of red and this red could indicate uh, signs of glaucomatous damage. You get the same thing on the RTV2 and this is what damage looks like on the RTV. You have to watch for segmentation artifacts and if you look at this patient here, I'll just take you back to this slide and you can see that this is the complex that you're interested in, this thickness. Look what's happening here. It has marked the edge of the complex here. So your ganglion cell complex, this bit of it which is normal tissue has not been marked and the OCT has actually missed it and because of this, of it misses this, it was likely to classify bits of it as abnormal. So this is something which is a little difficult to look at at the printout. It's easier to look at at the image, which is why whenever our uh, technicians take the image, they actually take six images and then they select which is the best, which is best segmented and they use that for analysis. So, okay, this is one more. Uh, so if you look at this here, I wanted to pay attention to this bit. Now when it's outside the green zone, it basically means that that is supranormal. And that supranormal bit looks like it's at 12 o'clock. So let's take a closer look at this image here. And what you're seeing is this bulge here, which is contributing to the supranormal bit on the OCT printout. And if you try and correlate this with this, what you're seeing are those two blood vessels. There. So it's possibly taking those two blood vessels. You're seeing some shadowing here, which is probably those two blood vessels. And that's the reason it's looking higher than normal. So if you have a nerve fiber defect which is very, very close to those blood vessels, you'll actually miss it. So you must look for these segmentation artifacts whenever you see something which is out of normal. And they're not uncommon. These are the proportion of patients with artifacts on the OCT. They're fairly common. So whenever you're interpreting an image report, you have to look at errors with image acquisition. You have to look at anatomic variability. High myops don't do perf perform well on any imaging. And you also have to keep in uh, mind the normative database that Sushmita was talking about. So how do I use OCT in diagnosis? And uh, this is somebody who is a scientist and uh, he has a family history of glaucoma. His pressures are always about 24, 25. He's not very keen on medications, but he doesn't want to go blind either. Visual fields look like this. You know his OCT and you are seeing some amount of loss there. So for the time being, I've elected to watch, but I've told him if I see any change on either of these, we would consider doing something about it. While more, and yeah, his ganglion cell complex is normal. This is somebody else, he's a surgeon, he's an active surgeon. Uh, so you're all just still operating. His visual fields look like this. He is very keen that I follow him up very, very closely. I would normally not try to do an OC in somebody who's this much damaged, but he's pretty paranoid about it. So I do both together. So if I see some fluctuation in the visual field, at least I can tell him your OCT is looking more or less the same before I jump in and do something else. Because he's on multiple medications, the next step is surgery, and he's not very keen on that right now. So that's his ganglion cell complex. And you can see fairly good correspondence between that and his 10-2 fields, which you don't always do. So in OCT in advanced in glaucoma, 
In advanced glaucoma, it has a good diagnostic capability. In moderate glaucoma, it has moderate diagnostic capability. In early glaucoma, it does not do as well. And this is true of all imaging, not just OCT. The reasons for that is this, this large inter-individual variability in structure. The optic disc varies by 600% between normal and abnormal. There's probably no other organ in the body which shows that amount of variability. In fact, if you want to pick up every single person with imaging, you probably need to have 35% ganglion cell loss before you can do that. Very similar to perimetry if you, one thinks about it. So how do you maximize the yield of a diagnostic test? If you have a disc like this, don't bother to test it. Every test you do will be normal and if there is abnormality, it's a false positive. If you have a nice abnormal looking disc like this with a visual field defect, don't bother. Every test that you do will be abnormal, it really doesn't help you. There are still challenges with the OCT and one is even though it shows you, it is supposed to give you a brilliant resolution, you don't actually achieve those values partly because there is some averaging that happens in order to eliminate motion artifacts and other things. So you think you are getting a 5 micron axial resolution or transverse resolution, those are actually not the values you get, you get something which is lower than that on an image. So in conclusion, you should understand that OCT has its limitations, you have to think about artifacts and quality. You have to forget that, that uh, remember that there's a statistical basis for this. A statistical abnormality need not necessarily be disease. Never interpret a diagnostic test in isolation. And going back to the first statement that Dr. Pandav made in this presentation, there is no substitute for a careful clinical assessment. Thank you.